I think we are in we are in a global war um, for freedom of speech, freedom of thought, and journalists really are on the front lines yeah. of that. And I 100% echo what Jason said about um, Maria's case and the Nobel Prize. Um, it's really important. I think the fact that the Nobel Prize was awarded to two journalists um, was a significant uh, landmark because it says the Nobel Prize Committee understands just how endangered free speech and, de and the democracy that it supports is. Uh, but I think, so the Nobel Prize Committee was trying to really uh, send up a flare, yep. you know, and say, this is an emergency, people, let's pay attention. And it is absolutely true that, uh, as we've seen, Dmitry Muratov and Maria Ressa continue to be under threat. Uh, and I will say, I'm a, I'm a double tiger, not just as a, a Missouri School of Journalism professor, but I am an alum of Princeton University, which is Mar also Maria's university. And I am incredibly proud of her classmates uh, from the Princeton class of 86, who just this week launched a drive because they feel that despite the Nobel Prize, she's still under threat. And so they're asking people to subscribe to Rappler because the, ta the tactic that's being used in that case is death by a thousand legal cuts. Uh, Maria's critics keep filing these lawsuits that are bogus lawsuits against her, against Rappler, in hopes that they can bankrupt the publication. So the idea behind this effort by the Princeton class of 86 is to say, subscribe to Rappler. If you can't afford a one-year subscription, which is $72 about, if when you convert the Philippine currency, uh, you can subscribe for a month. It's $8. And, um, and so go on to Rappler, subscribe, and uh, there's a hashtag called Princetonians4, the number four, Maria. And uh, I think it's just a great way to show support. Um, and that is the good news part yeah. for me, is that there are people in the country who recognize, who are not journalists. You know, I've met doctors, lawyers, former diplomats who really have uh, rallied together because Maria has become an avatar of this, this fight for, um, for democracy and press freedom. I want to say that I am going to commit to, uh, as soon as we're done here, tweeting out that uh, people should uh, subscribe to Rappler. I hope the four of us all do that and everybody that's watching Please today. Please do. Use our yeah. hashtag, yeah. Princetonians4, yeah. number four, Maria. So Maria was uh, an Obishan Press Freedom winner, and we were trying to get her to come to the States, but she wasn't allowed, and this has been discussed here. There are nine separate court cases against her in the Philippines, and she needs to clear with each court before she's allowed to travel. So I think she had cleared with seven different courts, seven different judges, but didn't get clearance from two, and so couldn't, couldn't come. So when Jason says he's concerned he's not going to see her again, this is what she has to go through just to leave the country. What has she told you about her experience? Um, you know, obviously you said you recently met her. Um, what, is, uh, what is her take well, on this? Well, fortunately, she, she dealing with it? Uh, Maria is, um, is a, a kind of beacon of hope and, and light um, and the sort of person who is undeterred by, by these threats. But it takes a toll. It takes yeah. a toll on, on I'm, entire communities. I'm going to coin a new term here. She is the acme of resilience. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she is, yes. she is yeah. just an amazing person. Um, yeah. She does not, uh, to, to Bill's point, um, she was invited to uh, receive a very big award at Princeton and uh, earlier this year, and initially she was not going to be able to come because she had been one of the many judges in her cases had refused to allow her to come. She filed an appeal, and she won. And she flew all night, got right off that airplane, and got in a car to go to Tom's River High School because she had promised her high school before she went to Princeton she was going to go to her high school and meet those kids. She had had no sleep. She went straight there, and yeah. then she went to Princeton and gave an amazing speech. That's who she is. Yeah. yeah. Just remarkable. But she is a remarkable person. But. That kind of remarkable resilience or resilience is, uh, has to be supported by people here. 
and people around the world, but really I think, uh, I, th I think, I've talked to Maria and I know she went through some really dark times when she was under attack. Uh, the, the theme at World Press Freedom Day in Uruguay today is about um, journalism under digital attack and she is a perfect example of that. <coughs> Um, she was under an incredible, a relentless, I mean, scores, hundreds, I can't remember the number of tweets a day accusing her of all kinds of stuff. And I think it's very dark. And I think the smart thing she did was speak out about it. Yeah. She had the courage to speak out, and that has ignited this um, a wave of support for her. But I think, I think the trick here, and I think this is why her classmates have launched this subscription drive, is you just because you've won the Nobel, as Jason said, it it is not as strong of a shield as we'd like. We have to keep talking about this case because the enemies of press freedom would like nothing more than all of us to get exhausted and stop talking about it. The other really important thing about uh, Maria's case and the Philippines in general is that because of the high levels of internet penetration and and cell phone usage. Mm -hmm. Uh, going back several years, it's kind of been a, 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 a test site for uh, big tech companies. And she's been sounding this, you know, alarm for years that there needs to be some regulation, that hate speech and uh, negative social media uh, posts do, um, you know, extremely well and there's bot armies. It starts in the Philippines, but what happens in the Philippines spreads to the rest of the world, right? Uh, and I think f most folks here in the United States or Europe don't think about it in that way, but that's the case. There's a reason that it's just now, uh, five years after he's left office, that former President Obama uh, is, is talking about this. We should have been talking about this in 2015. 100%. Maria was talking about it in 2015. 100%. So, you know, here we are now. Um, let's, let's learn the lessons of the last few years and do everything that we can to support her and others who are fighting this important battle.